In this video, I will teach you how to use these scores to find the percentage of data between any two values. You are going to need a z-score table like this one. So if you don't have one, uh, <clears throat> Google this phrase and print one out. Here is a typical problem. In 1999, the scores of men on the math part of the SAT followed a normal distribution, meaning a bell curve with a mean of 531 and a standard deviation of 115. What percentage of men scored between 450 and 550 um, on the SATs? So um, I'm demonstrating for you how I suggest you organize your work. And we're actually going to need two graphs. Now I'm cheating by cutting and pasting. But um, I, I drew these myself once upon a time. Uh, so you can draw you can draw it yourself uh, very easily. Now on the left side, I'm going to use the numbers that I have. In this case, SAT scores, but let's label properly. So SAT scores. On this graph, I'm going to depict Z scores. So let's label that. Now let's add some numbers to our graphs. So they mentioned that for SAT scores the mean is 531. This line right down the middle is the mean. Now for Z scores the mean is always 0. Now we have a chart which tells us what percentage of the data is to the left of any Z score. So that chart does not help us with SAT scores, only Z scores. So um, keep that in mind. Now, what percentage of men scored between 400 and 550? Now we've got the mean, so 450, did I say 400? 450 and 550. Uh, 450 is below the mean, so I'm going to label it over here. Okay, there's my 450. 550 is above the mean, so I'm going to put it over here. Okay, now if we want the percentage of men who scored between these two numbers, on the graph that means we're looking for the percentage of data that falls in between these two lines. Okay, so we're looking for the percentage of data that falls into this yellow area. Now, as I mentioned, um, our chart will help us out with z-scores, but it will not help us with these SAT scores. So what we need to do is translate these SAT scores into z-scores. So um, that's our next move. So let's see, the formula goes like this. Maybe I'll just write it here real quick. Here's the z-score formula. Um, if you want a z-score, you're going to take whatever value you have, subtract from it the mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. All right, that's how you find a z-score. We're going to have to do that twice for each of these two numbers. Okay, um, so the first SAT score, 450. If I want to find the z-score for that, I'll call it z1, um, that's going to be 450 minus the mean um, divided by the standard deviation, which was 115. Okay, um, so you could just put that in your calculator. All right, and that rounds to negative 0.70. We want two decimal places here. Very important, two decimal places. Okay, even if it's a zero, keep it. Now let's do the other um, SAT score and convert that into a Z score. All right, so uh, I will call this Z2. <clears throat> um, 
So for this, I'm going to do 550 minus 531, again, over 115. So let's calculate this. All right, I wanted to show you how I round this. Um, so I need to cut this to two decimal places. Um, but I have to round properly or else it will really uh, throw off my numbers. So notice that the next number is 5. If the next number is 5 or higher, you need to round this number up. So because this is 5 or higher, um, instead of doing 0 0.16, I'm actually going to do 0 0.17. All right, so round carefully. So now we have found these two z-scores. So the upper z-score is 0 0.17. Now this is my z-score graph, so this is where I will put my z-scores. And my lower z-score was negative 0 0.70. Now we can use z-scores to help us find um, percentages between SAT scores because the percentages should be the same. All right, even though we've converted to Z scores, the percentage of data between these two Z scores should be the same as the percentage of data between these two SAT scores. All right, so we can go ahead and concentrate on the Z scores because we have a chart for that. Um, but whatever answer we get from the z-scores, it should be the same answer for the SAT scores. Okay, so now I'm going to take the z-scores and I'm going to use my chart. Now, remember, the chart shows the percentage of data to the left of any z-score. That's less than any z-score. So let's start with a z-score of negative 0.70. Okay, I've got to find that. Um, these are positive, so I'm going to go over to the other page. Okay, negative 0 0.7 is right here. And then this is the zero column. Well, I jumped, so that's inconvenient. Um, so this first column is the zero column, and then 0 0.1, uh, sorry, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, etc. So we want negative 0.70. So we go to negative 0 0.7, which is right here, and then this first value would represent, uh-oh, can I undo that? Um, this, f okay. All right, this first value represents negative 0 0.70. Okay, so translating this decimal into percent that's 24.20 percent all right now just remember this is the percentage of data that is to the left okay so the percentage of z scores that are to the left of this number we just found out was 24.20%. Okay, um, we're going to need that number later to help us do the between. But for now, let's go ahead and jump over to the next z-score. Let's go ahead and find the percentage of z-scores to the left of 0 0.17 okay we'll do the between afterwards um, but first we're gonna go ahead and get the left side the less than numbers which we can get right off the chart so whoa I put 0 0.71 didn't I dyslexia okay 0 0.17 Okay, that's a positive number, so let's go to this side. Here's 0 0.1, and then 0 0.10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, that's 56.75% below 
that particular z score. 56.75. Okay, so fine. We found that 24.20% of the data is below this number. 56.75% of the data is below this number. Now we want to find the percentage of the data that's between these two numbers. Well, check this out. Here's the trick. If you want to find the percentage of data that's uh, between these two numbers, in other words, we want z-scores that are, look like this. Negative 0 0.70 is less than these z-scores, which are less than, uh, whoops, putting the percentage. I'm supposed to be doing z-scores, less than 0 0.17. Okay, this means between negative 0 0.70 and 0 0.17. If we want to find the percentage of z-scores between these two numbers, all you have to do is subtract the individual left side percentages, less than percentages. Subtract these two. Um, so all we have to do is do 56.75% minus 24.20%. All right, just subtract the two. Just do the big one minus the small one, and there you go. So I'm just going to punch this in my calculator real quick. That's giving me 32.55%. So that is the percentage of data that's between these two z-scores. All right, so check it out. So between these two z-scores, I have 32 point fifty five percent of the data um, like I said near the beginning of this video that means the percentage of SAT scores between these two SAT scores should be the same as the percentage between the Z scores so that means this area of this graph is also thirty two point fifty five percent alright so um, in this space is where I like to uh, answer these questions in a complete sentence. This is a real world problem and anytime you have a real world problem you shouldn't just answer with a number. You have to include the context what the problem is about. So I will say something like this. 32.55% um, of the men who took the SATs in 1999 got between 450 and 550 on the math part. All right. And that is the final answer. So just uh, to summarize, if you want to do between two numbers, um, obviously convert them both into z-scores. Um, find those percentages right off the chart. All right, They are less than percentages. But find those percentages right off the chart and then subtract them. So if you want to find uh, the percentage uh, between two z-scores, you subtract those percentages that you got off the chart and that'll give you the percent between.